Hey, what's up, Destiny? Hey, what's up? Hi. Um, welcome to Discourse Diner. Uh, this is just a simple ask me, uh, ask me anything. But uh, yeah, so we have a lot of questions to get through. And uh, if anyone else would like to ask any questions, just come on over at discord.gg slash discourse diner. And uh, we'll be moderating, so don't be naughty. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, Destiny, for uh, anyone in this channel who doesn't know who you are, could you just give like a quick little introduction? Yeah, I started streaming on Twitch or other websites, I guess, about 10 or 11 years ago. Um, some people know me for gaming. A lot of people today know me for like political stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I'd say I'm like a social democrat politically, and then I'm pretty far left socially, and yeah. Um, okay, so Joel Provides asks, do you think people use natalism as an excuse for homophobia? Um, what? How, wait, how is natalism connected to homophobia? Can I get some clarification there? Uh, I have no clue. I'm just going to skip to the next one because he did not clarify. <laughs> okay. That's a mistake. I guess that's a mistake on his part. Damn. I'm sorry. I'm already failing. Yeah. So, Iron. No, 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 no. It's uh, Joel Provides Fall. <laughs> uh, Iron asks What do you think of the possibility that Trump doesn't want to allow for a peaceful transition of power? He said in his recent interview on Fox with Chris Wallace that he may not accept the results of the election. What could this mean for the country? Um, I've got a friend that thinks that I kind of wonder if like he would not accept the election results. I had somebody else to give me a pretty compelling explanation for why he wouldn't though. And that's that he's just like, he's not a very brave man. Um, if he's got to stand down like some actual people, um, if he has to like actually get into some real conflict in order to do, I guess what would essentially be like a coup. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think he'd have the gall to do it. I think he'd complain a little bit and then he'd just leave. He would okay, just complain um, a bit and then leave. Yeah, he'd like he'd so. complain a little bit. I don't think he'd just leave. I don't. I don't think he would actually stay and like fight or like command like armies or militaries to like fight against other people. I don't. I don't think he would be involved in all that conflict. I think he'd just peace out. Shut the fuck up, man! All right, okay. it's a stupid and fucking thing. And with the, the guy with the, who was asking the previous question, I uh, asked him if he wants to. I I, I, know, I know this dude. I, I'll I'll let him ask him to see if that's okay. Um. Uh, can you unmute him, Mark? Oh, there we go. Oh, he's, uh, he's there we go. Hello. All right. Sorry. Hi. No, my question was I've just noticed that a lot of them. Traditionalist speakers um, would use uh, natalism as an excuse for homophobia and use the idea of our uh, population density lowering as a as an argument uh, against, uh, I suppose, being gay, which I've I, noticed I, like, that quite a lot. Are, are you talking about this from like a biological sense? Like they would say, like, well, it's impossible for one to be gay because human are humans are supposed to like reproduce, like in that sense, or that like. Or it's immoral to be gay because our purpose is to reproduce. What, what angle there is? I, I found it's put more as a societal standard. Uh, you must, for the good of society, um, I suppose, be straight. And I've noticed that a lot with traditional, more traditionalist people or people who um, push heavy natalism is, is what I've noticed. I, is, I, I, is I just don't like... I train don't... of... Yeah, I guess I haven't interacted. But I'm just with, asking what you think about. Yeah, I haven't interacted with a lot of people that like push like like natalism is the f reason why. Like usually when people say that like they're homophobic, usually it's because they believe that like homophobic. Well, from a religious point of view, that homophobic or I'm sorry, that being a homosexual, being gay, is in and of itself intrinsically bad. That it like betrays like some deeper purpose for like your reproductive organs or what you ought to do in life. Um, from like a birth rate or, or like should we have kids point of view. Um, I don't. I don't even think there is. There aren't enough gay people to really influence that from a population level. I guess. I. I don't know. I, ha I haven't like engaged with any of those arguments. Cause I haven't heard people put forth those types of arguments seriously. But it's possible there are people that do. I just don't engage with them directly. All right. Crack Jack Flood would uh, would like to ask: Would you eliminate the welfare state and replace it with negative taxation? Um. The. Usually when I hear somebody say the welfare state, I don't know where we're, what point we're starting from. Um, I, I mean, we already have a, a kind of a little bit in the form of like tax refunds. We have some kind of negative taxation in the United States a little bit. Um, but in terms of like get rid of get rid of all forms of welfare and just it, it sounds like we're asking like a UBI question, like replace all forms of welfare with like a negative tax rate, like just doing like cash payments to people. Um, I don't I don't know what the um, current data is on that. I know that people were trying to do a few UBI experiments. 
um, to see how they turn out. I've heard a couple billionaires are supposedly funding some. I know they were doing some, I think, in Canada, but I, I would just have to see what the data says. I, I don't know where we're at right now on it. I'm not All ideologically right. in favor or opposed to either one. Uh, Jules Myvern asks, do you think people have a moral obligation to stop people from harming themselves or each other? And does that apply to cops harming people as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we probably ought not harm each other. Um, and should we stop cops from harming people? I mean, if you see a cop that you think is engaged in like the unjustified harm of another person, you should probably stop it, yeah. All right. Um, Teletubby Sniper asks, what do you think will be the long-term effects of this current pandemic, geopolitically, economically, societally, and culturally? No That's fucking idea. A That's, That's a, quite a, a, a huge question. Yeah, I don't know. No one knows. Huge. Everybody's wondering what the effects are going to be right now. Um, I, there's there's going to be widespread effects across every part of the... Or maybe there'll be nothing. I don't know. I can't read the future, and I, I don't know. There's so many different things that are impacted. It's hard to say. Uh, M. Bloom asks, as of today, who do you think is the most likely to win the 2020 presidential election? If the election was held right now, it seems like Biden would win in a landslide. I'm hoping that it stays the same for the next few months, but who knows? Five months, four months is a long time. Anything can happen. Uh, Tomb Explorer asks, do you think that it is important to know the history of a country or region, understand its current state, and do you read beforehand the history before you want to, to talk about a foreign region or country? Um, it depends on the it depends on the particular history and it depends on the particular topic. Um, I mean, like theoretically, knowing more history about a given region is probably always good, just because it can give you more context of how somebody would like deal with like current uh, deal with like current situations or, or policies that you want to implement. Um, but but I mean, it, it super depends, I guess, on like what are what particular policies we're talking about implementing, I guess. Like, I don't know how important it is. Well, I mean, no, it's probably always important to know some history. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm doing a debate or if I'm talking about, like, um, the current affairs of any particular country, it's usually good to at least know, like, some recent history, yeah. Comrade Malibu asks, do you think if Trump is reelected, the protests and riots will only get worse, especially in the state of Portland? It's possible. Um, I, I mean, I feel like we're, we must be hitting protest fatigue at some point where people will get tired of it. But, yeah, I don't know. Any, uh, yeah, they could continue to protest here. Yeah. The Women's March was in, in, to some level, like a protest of Trump's presidency, I think, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was, yeah. But uh, The Cum Guzzler asks, <laughs> what do you think of the taxation in Sweden? Um, I, I don't have strong opinions about, like, a particular form of taxation or whatever. Like, as long as it works, it works. I'm more interested in, like, what are social programs that we need and are those programs funded? That's usually what I'm more concerned about. So, like, if somebody asks me, like, what's your optimal level of taxation? I don't know. I don't, I don't really care. What I care about is do we have, you know, what, what social programs do we have and are those being funded? So, for instance, like, right now, it seems like we need to fund some form of universal health system. We don't have that. We need that funded, right? So it seems like we probably have to couple that with a tax increase. What that tax increase needs to be, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it seems like we probably need some form of higher taxation on wealthier people, but I'm not like super set on like some particular rate where I don't think it'd be like, oh, well, you know, Sweden taxes it at X rate, so we should do that rate. Like, well, I don't know if that rate is good for America. I don't know if um, there would be too much disincentivization of, of certain things in the United States, you know, whether it's investing or working. Um, and I don't know if we need to tax that much to fund certain programs. Or we might need to tax more, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, it would, it would be very complicated from country to country. Mm -hmm. Um, only Clichés asks, have you heard of Alan Watts, and what do you think of him, if you have? The only thing I know about Alan Watts is he shows up in a lot of songs I listen to because people add his voice in. Um, he sounds like the kind of guy that I would listen to, and I would just think he's totally full of shit. But he says interesting stuff. I don't know. So, and anytime somebody says, anytime anybody starts talking about Eastern philosophy, I get very iffy. But I, but that's not really fair for me to say. I, honestly, I just haven't listened to much of him. I don't know. He might be like a really smart, really cool dude. I, I don't know much about him. I don't know what to say. Okay. Uh, Lich asks, you've said previously you support the idea of a national language all citizens of a given country should be able to speak. Why do you hold this position, and do you have any concrete examples or studies to substantiate your stance with? Um, I don't know what kind of a study I would look for for supporting a national language. I, I think a national language is important because I think we should at least be able to communicate with each other. Um, if you have countries where there are people that like are completely and totally unable to communicate with other people, I think that represents a very scary border or barrier between groups of people that could like segment off parts of your country in a really negative way. Uh, do you think that it could be like uh, you could have like have bilingual, have it be bilingual nationally for education, like instead of like one <laughs> national language? Is it necessary to just do one? 
Honestly, if you would have asked me this a, a year ago, I think I would have said no, but I've been to Montreal before and those people are surprisingly bilingual. Like older people in Montreal can speak both English and French. Well, I assume they speak French very well. I don't speak French, but it's, they speak English very well. I actually didn't think, I didn't, there were a lot of people that I met in Montreal, like at a restaurant that I thought were just native English speakers. And then they turned around and started speaking French. And I was like, really, it was crazy to me. So maybe, maybe a bilingual country could work. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just think at the very least, like we should have some foundation, like language that we can use to communicate with each other. Like, I don't care about, like, different cultures and religions and ideas. Like, I think all of that is cool, and I can participate in all of that. But when somebody's speaking a totally different language, it's like, oh, shit. Like, I actually feel like an alien now. Like, I feel, like, really cut off from this. And I'm somebody that's, like, very not caring much about, like, culture and any of that shit. So if I feel that way, I can't imagine how, like, a normal human being would feel. It would probably feel really horrible. Uh, last year, I visited Montreal, and that was actually the reason why I asked the bilingual question. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're super bilingual, or at least in the parts of Montreal I was in, they were super, super bilingual there. It was really crazy to me. Their English was very There's also good. a lot of smokers. <laughs> yeah, that's... Are you American? Yeah, I'm an American. Yeah. I'm from Pennsylvania. How old are you? 18. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm I'm 30, yeah. uh, 31. So in America, we used to have a lot of smoking everywhere, but we got rid of it hardcore. But anytime I go to Europe or outside of the United States, the smoking is incredibly prevalent. Holy shit. But, yeah. All right. Stage uh, Baj asks, what are your thoughts on worker cooperatives, aka collectivization of capital ownership in a free market? Um, I, I mean, if it's enforced, it's stupid. If it works, it works. Um, it seems like some industries might be better to, for co-ops than other industries. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not like ideologically opposed to them. I'm not ideologically like, oh yeah, we need co-ops. Like, I don't. I don't think there's anything inherently bad about like capital ownership structure. So, people want to do them, knock yourselves out. All right. Uh, Tori asks, who would you rather fight, Sargon or Vosh? And I got a clarification. He's actually talking about a fight. He's not talking about a debate. <laughs> um, in an actual fight, fight. Um. I mean, I'm a pretty small dude. I feel like I'd have trouble versus both of them. I'd probably, I'd probably do like Sargon because that guy is actually so stupid. Like, there might be a way to just like trick him into like falling over and killing himself. Or something. I don't know. Like, that guy is unbelievably dumb. Like, if I, if you gave me like one of those like little red capes that they use to like get bulls to run into them into nothing, I would take Sargon 100% because I could probably trick him with that. That guy is so dumb. But yeah. So, uh, Crackjack Flood asks, cream or milk in your coffee? Or actually, fuck, now that I'm thinking about it, Sargon is a warrior. That dude killed the entire UKIP. Maybe, uh, maybe I'd choose Vosh instead. <laughs> I am just kidding. Alright, Sargon. Oh, that's a good one. Um, what was that question? But cream or milk in your coffee? Um, I don't actually drink coffee. If I did, it'd probably be cream, though, because that's meant for coffee, right? You put the cream in the coffee? Do people really just pour milk? I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know. He's British. Who knows? Oh, what a f weird fuck. <laughs> uh, Crow Can't Call asks, do you have a personal philosophical school you adhere to, like rationalism, empiricism, utilitarianism? Nope. Oh, that's fast. All right, let me get rid of that one. Uh, Nana asks, do you consider reading slash being informed on theory to be worthwhile? Um, I'm going to answer no, because when, whenever somebody says theory, they're usually talking about leftist shit, and 99% of leftists I see on the internet don't even understand the current economic theory, let alone any esoteric one from hundreds of years ago, so I, I, I don't know. if you're wasting your time reading theory, there's probably a million other things. If you are going to read theory, like, at least read something more modern than Marx. I say that, but, like, nobody that even follows Marx reads Marx anyway, so I don't even know. Eh. So uh, Kim John Il's uncle asks, do you think radical ideologies will pop in countries like they did 100 years ago, fascism, communism, etc.? Uh, I mean, radical ideologies already exist in countries, right? Just a matter of how big they get? Yeah, I think he's just talking about them like, like booming again. Booming? Um, I don't know. Hopefully we see that shut down a little bit now that we, we got all... Hopefully we're getting all that populist shit out of our system now with Trump. But... Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, we saw it. We did it a little bit. Okay. Um, I remember talking about this a lot like four or five years ago. Like, the, 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 it seems like, or what I've heard said a lot, is that like the way that populism works is every now and then you get a big populist leader that is going to fix all your problems. The establishment is evil. They're going to do everything they can to fix everything. And then they get into power. You learn that they can't actually do anything. They don't solve any problems. They don't fix anything. And then people go back to normal. So hopefully we're over that Trump shit now because clearly he couldn't get anything done. Yeah, I mean, besides, like, concentration camps in the border and stuff, <laughs> putting people in cars, but, sure. you know. Um, Broadly Jim asks, do you think that China is inevitably going to overtake the United States as a predominant world power? Um, I mean, on our current course, that seems to be the case, like, unless China fucks China up. Well, I guess you never know. I guess they could. 
Man. Um, Connor asks, what are your favorite Minecraft mods? Um, I don't really play modded Minecraft much. Have you ever played the Aether? Nope, I don't think so. That's like the, uh, the main one that you see in memes with the... Like, as a kid, you would build a uh, glowstone portal mm -hmm. and try to put the water in, but you wouldn't have the mod, so then it would just spill out. That's oh. where all those come from. Interesting, okay. But, uh, Michelle asks, do you support welfare, and is it a net positive or negative? Do you, that's such a vague question. What do you mean, do I support welfare? I, like, it, that question is so incredibly vague. Um, I'll try to do, like, the most charitable answer I can, but, like, um, I mean, like, I, yeah, I support... I mean, I imagine, yeah, I would support welfare. Um, I mean, there are certain people in society that need cash transfers to keep society working. So, like, in general, like, yeah, I think I'd support welfare. Um, Gage asks, what are your thoughts about Antifa being a registered terrorist organization in, in the United States? It seems a little weird. I don't know why. Is BLM going to be, like, a registered terrorist organization next? Or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Looks, seems kind of silly that they're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Skyla asks, what are your favorite high pixel games? Uh, don't play any, so no clue. Oh, wait, that's like a Minecraft server thing. I don't I don't actually play on any of that stuff. I just play like the normal, the unmodded Minecraft game generally. Yeah. Uh, Fletcher asks, do you think that the correlation between conservatism and the right and progressivism and the left is pro problematic? Um, maybe a little bit. I don't know. If you would ask me a while ago, I was like really against that whole like, oh, two party system is bad, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, like, I think there exists like a decent amount of variety in both parties right now. I don't think it's like the lack of more, more parties in America that's holding back diversity of opinion. Like we have primaries, you know, if you want to vote somebody different than the establishment candidate, you have the ability to do so. There's a wide variety of opinions right now, I think on both sides of both parties. Like in the in the Democratic Party, we've got the ultra ultra progressives, even some leftists now, um, like actual leftists, like communist socialists, all the way to like the more establishment or even like blue dog Democrats. Um, and then on the right, you've got all the weird white nationalist figures, like um, t you know Tucker Carlson almost, um, all the way to like the super neocons, like Sean Hannity. Um, to yeah, I, I don't know. I think we have like a decent diversity between the, the political parties we have right now. Um, it's just most people's opinion opinions seem to fall like closer to the middle of the spectrum on both. Uh, only cliches asks, and uh, this is an interesting one. If you could send a short message back two thousand years, what would it be? Um. Oh fuck! I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Um. I think like sanitation and vaccinations are the two most important medical things. So maybe something related to that, or maybe something related to technology. Um. How did like electricity or some shit? I don't know. <laughs> but that might be like too advanced for two thousand years. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Iron asks, how do you think the world should be responding to the Chinese treatment of the Uyghurs? Um, the Uyghur problem in China is really bad. Yeah, Uyghurs. The, the, bad. No, the, I mean, it needs some, t some, some type of global condemnation and then some type of global punishment <laughs> um, on, on China. But, um, I, I mean, the world is not unified enough right now to deliver that response. So. Uh, Fletcher asks, how do you feel about CRISPR? Um, I don't really. I you know, it always like pops up in the news, like oh, Gina didn't blah blah blah. But I don't know where they're at right now in their current shit. Um, I mean, like the implications are cool. The idea of eradicating certain, um, especially like single gene diseases and stuff, is like pretty awesome. But yeah, I mean, we'll see when they, how much work they make or how much progress they make in the coming decade. Um, Nanimator asks, how was your burrito? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't eat a burrito recently. <laughs> I guess he thought it was a burrito then. Maybe. Who knows? Um, Broadly, Jim asks, if Bernie Sanders was the Democratic presidential nominee right now, do you think he would win? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, Hedocratic asks, uh, do you think more extreme ideologies are inherently more marketable than a pragmatic worldview? Is it easier to sell someone on the idea of Nazism or communism than it is to sell them on the idea of incremental change and actual like viable political action slash policies? Yeah, I think that like more extreme ideologies are always more entertaining or more alluring um, because 
because they they offer like massive change and that's usually like more desirable to some people. Um, well, hold on, let me think about this. I, I, I Okay, one thing I have to worry about is because I spend all my time on the internet and on the internet, um, the, the internet is so much different than the real world. I think in the real world, I think people are more more a fan of incrementalism than the radical shit that you see online. I think online people are more susceptible to it because they tend to be more radical. They tend to be younger, more idealistic, less connected to actual political issues. So the radical shit is more entertaining and fun to them. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, it seems more eventful online than in real life, but... Mm-hmm. Um, Erron asks, Have you looked into MMT, modern monetary theory? The basic premise being that deficits don't matter in a country, and what are your thoughts about it? If not, I'd like to hear your opinion on it in the future. Uh, MMT seems like a fun meme, I guess. Um, I, I don't feel like you need MMT to explain anything about current monetary theory. Um, I, I don't know. I don't really care about MMT much. I don't think about it much. I don't think it offers like any new insights or anything crazy or whatever. Like I don't know. It's, I, I I mean I understand why some people subscribe to it when you have Republicans that are like crying about like budgets and, and deficits. Like I, like sometimes people hyperfixate on like debt or or deficit spending too much, which is kind of dumb. But yeah, otherwise I don't you know, I don't care much about MMT. Uh, so asks, what's your opinion on postmodernism? Um, <laughs> it's a really, really, really broad topic. Um, I, postmodernism is cool as fuck. I like deconstructing things. Um, Emblem asks, are you ever going to beat the Ender Dragon? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, Snickers Knee 420 asks, what are your top three TV shows? Um, this is pretty standard and pretty boring. I really like The Wire is my number one. Um, number two would probably be the first four seasons of Game of Thrones. And then, I don't know what number three would be. I really like Dexter. Um, I haven't watched The Sopranos or Oz, unfortunately, which are both shows that I think I'm supposed to watch. But, um, yeah. Uh, Fletcher asks, how do you feel about gender abolition? Um, I don't, it seems like a cool thing. I like the idea of it. I don't know if humans can live in a gender abolished world. That might be too important to like our, like, we might have some need for those identities maybe that without people would be too sad or depressed or something. Um, but I think the idea is cool, or at least freeing people from like a lot of the gender norms we have in society. But I, I don't know if humans can exist in that state. I'm not sure. I haven't, I mean, we haven't seen like a gender abolished area, so it's hard to say. Yeah, it hasn't been demonstrated, but who knows? Uh, Kyle asks, do you see your content as entertainment or more as a way of informing or educating your audience? Um, it has to be a little of both. I think it's a little disingenuous to pretend that you can be one and not the other. Like A lot of people rely on their information coming through a lot of their entertainment these days. Um, so, I mean, like in a way, it's both, I would say. Uh, Jules My Vern asks, and I know you said at the beginning that you're like for social democracy. Mm-hmm. He asks, uh, you... You always call yourself a neoliberal or a social democrat. Is it possible you might be a social liberal? I don't know what that is, but sure, if it's some combination of the two, sure. Social liberal, that's... Yeah, yeah, I don't know, sure, I don't know. (laughs) I've never heard that term before, but maybe. (laughs) Um, Joel provides asks, Do you feel Russia is dangerous or in some fashion a threat to Western democracy? Uh, maybe a little bit, but I think the danger is more how uninformed and stupid we are. So it allows Russia to be more uh, damaging, I guess. But I think we have problems that are way more important than Russia fucking around with things. Although that is still something that should be taken seriously. Okay, so bear with me for a second. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Are you aware of Duganism? Duganism? Nope. Something like that? And uh, what are your thoughts on it? Sounds I uh, guess... doogie. I, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Um, Iron asks, uh, if Trump loses re-election, do you expect an increase in the number of hate crimes against minority groups? Uh, what do you think could be done to pre- prepare for this? If he loses the election? Yeah, if he loses re-election, do you expect an increase in the number uh, the, of hate crimes? Everything is so unprecedented. I don't try to make any predictions about I don't even predict who's going to win. I think Biden will win, I think. But, like, anything can happen or change. Like, who knows? Who, who knows where we'll even be at in, in a few months? Like, if the entire country fucking hates Trump because of how fucked everything is, I don't know. I wouldn't expect people to retaliate that much. Um, but but it's possible that people will. I'm not sure. I, 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 really, I It's so hard to make these predictions. It could, it couldn't. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Every, everybody wants to know right now what a post-Trump America is going to look like. Like, everybody around the world is probably looking to the United States to see what that's going to be. Like, are all politicians going to be as brutal and, and vulgar and nasty as Trump? Or are we going to go back to normal? Or what is the new way? Is there going to be, like, a new wave of politicians? Or, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say. 
Can I follow that up real quick? Uh, I want to ask, like, more specifically, what do you do? You think it's more likely that we won't go back to like a like that this will be some kind of permanent sh like shift in American politics, or do you think that it probably will rubber band back to like, the way things were before? The problem is that like, if you would have asked me right now if Trump could ever become president, I would have told you no a million times over in 2016. I would never think that somebody that sounds so unbelievably fucking stupid could be president. I just wouldn't believe it. I still almost don't believe it. So to ask me to make predictions past that is just so fucking hard. Like, I, I I mean, like, based on all the polling data right now, it kind of seems like we're pointed back towards normalcy or we're going to rubber band pretty far back towards the left, um, depending on how far Biden pushes things. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's really, I, I don't know. I, like, like I said, like the entire world right now is looking to see like where America is going to head after Trump. If we're going back to normal or if it's going to be crazy for the rest of our country's existence or what the fuck is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Naley Official asks, what do you think about patriotism and people who claim that America is the best country in the world? Um, I think patriotism, I think like that nationalistic shit is like really dumb. Um, I mean, America is the best country in some ways, but we're not the best country in a lot of other ways. Um, if you, if you get too hyped up on that American exceptionalist shit, it helps it, or it makes us, you can't really see your own problems to fix them, which is really, really, really bad. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not big on... Wait. What? So would that mean that you think there's a difference between patriotism and nationalism? I mean, we can call it whatever. It becomes, it becomes semantic. But, like, I mean, there's you should probably have some healthy level of enjoyment or love or appreciation for your country, right? You probably need that for a functioning country. Otherwise, everybody would be tax-evading murderers that are trying to fuck everybody over all the time, right? But, like, this, you don't have to get hyped up on this. Like, my country is better than every other country. Like, fuck everybody else. Like, oh, best country in the world. Like, we should nuke and bomb everybody because we're so, like, yeah, that's probably not good, right? Yeah, it doesn't sound that great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fletcher asks, how do you feel about Joe Jorgensen? Joe Jorgensen? Did I say that wrong? I don't know who it is. I don't either. Should I have a feeling about this person? Um, that's the uh, libertarian, the libertarian candidate. candidate. Yeah. Don't okay. care about libertarians at all, so I have no feelings about him. <laughs> Jed Boy asks, to what extent should education be free? Uh, print, uh, he, sent, he then says, based on age, minimum needs, and etc. That kind of thing. Um, if we have people that want to go to school, we probably shouldn't be keeping them from going to school because they don't have the money to do so. That should be like a consideration that we should make, right? We want like the most talented, brightest people to have the ability to go to school and pursue jobs in the economy without money being an inhibiting factor. So wh whatever that level of access looks like is what I'd be okay with, I think. So uh, Test Please Ignore asks, given the increasing sentiment of nationalism and increasing authoritarianism, such as Poland, America, China, UK, uh, and more, how do you think global interconnectedness uh, and the globalized economy will change? I have no idea. Hopefully we make, hopefully we go back to where we were before, where we were becoming increasingly globalized. Um, the idea of cutting everything up into like little pl places and not being globalized anymore is really scary because you're basically ceding everything to China at that point. Because on their own, they can bully pretty much the entire world economy if nobody wants to like group up and kind of take a stand against them. Uh, Discord All Night asks, do you think there is a silver bullet response to the conservative talking point that many poor, high uh, persons of colors, high crime areas are run by Democrat mayors, places like Chicago, Detroit, etc.? Um, silver bullet argument? Probably not. I mean, highly urbanized areas tend to be more liberal all the time, right? Like, I, I don't know what like what silver bullet argument you could ever give for any of this. Um, it's all, all anything related to race is going to be like ultra super complicated. So, yeah. Uh, conservatives, they seem to correlate that when... when I mean, like, nine, almost every single city is, like, heavily blue, right? Like, even, like, in fucking Texas, yeah. like, Austin and Dallas are, like, blue. So it's going to make sense that, like, a lot of blue... A lot of cities are blue, whether they're successful or not successful, so... Uh, Nanimator asks, what's your opinion on American foreign military intervention? Um, I... It, that's... <laughs> It's like, what's your opinion on, like, knives? I mean, it can be good, it can be bad. I mean, I think in some cases, like in Bosnia, I think American intervention can be really good. Um, in other cases, um, like probably in Iraq, or at least the aftermath, American intervention can be really bad. Um, I, I mean, I'm not, it's not a, something that I'm, like, de facto against. Like, no Amer American military intervention. I think that's stupid. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, it's more a question of, like, what are responsible foreign policy aims? Are we, are we um, open about those aims? And, yeah. Uh, Don the Con, uh, Louis v uh, Vuitton asks, what is your take on Hollywood elites long string of sexual abuse and pedophilia and their possible involvement with people in large positions of power? 
Um, if it's happening, it sucks. It should be investigated. What other opinion? I think it's good that there are pedophiles that are raping children. I, like, I don't, what other opinion could I have? I mean, I don't know. It seems like a shitty thing. Yeah, I don't know what he was expecting from that question. Uh, be in the moment asks. What it's do hard you think on, it means on some of these. It's hard. I'm not be, accusing oh. anybody of anything. I'm trying to be nice. Yeah. Or it's really hard. But on some some of these questions are can be like very dog whistly. So I'm not sure sometimes if people are checking for. So for instance, when you talk about like like it has been some scandals and shit with like children and like Hollywood people or whatever. But like some people will ask that. But what they're really saying is like, so you know, right? That like all politicians and like Hillary Clinton like take kids into basements and have these satanic rituals where they rape children and blah 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 like this is just totally normal among all politicians it's like I don't think that's true so yeah I don't know like if you're just asking about like the Hollywood sex scandal stuff or whatever like that seems to be a problem that's been reported at for a long time like a lot of people have been complaining about child abuse and shit in Hollywood it seems to be like really 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 complained about like for a long time um, so that's really bad but if you're asking for like some deeper conspiracy thing I don't think I'd buy into that no but okay yeah, I hope he's not one of those people, but Iron asks, how do you vet your news sources to make sure you're getting accurate information and not fake news, TM? Uh, a lot of people seem like really obsessed with this. The truth is, is that if you read the full article, you're already more informed than 95% of people that read news. Uh, it's really not that hard to get like a decent picture of what's going on. Like if you just read like a couple publications, um, like you're probably doing okay. Like on the ground reporting by like AP or Reuters is usually like gold standard so far as like just like figuring out like what happened goes. But then other than that, like if you just read like a variety of like sources, you'll probably get like a d decent picture of what's going on. Just try to stay away from like the super, super biased ones. <laughs> um, Fletcher asks as like a follow up to the libertarian thing where you said the third party didn't matter do you think third parties have a place in the future um, in the US not as long as we use first past the post third parties basically only serve to fuck up whatever they want to achieve because if you're a third party the only votes that you're taking are votes from a from a party that probably more closely aligns with you politically than another one so you're literally only hurting yourself by being a third party in the United States uh, Naley official asks, could you be friends with someone on the right? Like, where do you draw the line between a person having views you strongly disagree with or views that are damaging to certain groups of people, such as minorities? I mean, it depends on what kind of friendship we're talking of. This is like, is this somebody that I like play Call of Duty with? Like, yeah, I can be friends with tons of different types of people. Um, is this somebody that I go back and forth a lot on political opinions with? Like, well, now it depends on how far right they are what, or what the capacity of our relationship is. If we like debate each other all the time on stream, like, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, in terms of like somebody that I'm like dating or very close friends with, it's highly unlikely I would ever see any values of anything of value in like an ultra conservative person. I probably would never consider myself a close friend with anybody like that because we probably just don't have enough shared values. Much the same that like I would be surprised if anybody that that's like very far right would ever consider me that close of a friend because we would miss a lion on a lot of values. So, I don't know. Could you play Call of Duty with uh, Nick Fuentes? Um, it super depends on what I've got going on. Um, I, I <laughs> very worry about like platforming people like that and making them seem like funny or likable or whatever. Like, I truly think he's a disgusting fuck human being. So, I don't know. I don't anything that like contributes to his popularity would um, bother me if I was, yeah, platforming him would be pretty bad. I just meant like, like playing with him and like just as a friend like in other times because you were talking about how like it didn't necessarily matter yeah i don't know i'd have to think about it i mean it, it wouldn't necessarily matter but like it would it, we're depending on levels to reasonable levels right like i don't think i would have like hitler in my minecraft server like it would be kind of weird like yeah because uh that, that question interests me because i come from a community where these people are like very far right some of them believe in like Jewish conspiracies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but like, I had to kind of pick my poison on who to hang out with. Sure. Kind of thing. Um, I would love to grief Richard Spencer's Minecraft house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Naley Official asks, who's your top five favorite superheroes? I uh, top five? I don't even know if I know five superheroes. I'm not a huge superhero person. I just like watching some of the Marvel movies. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a huge like superhero person. I don't know if I could eat. Uh, yeah. I like Iron uh, Man and Batman because I'm a capitalist and I like rich people. There you go. <laughs> Tess, please ignore, asks, what's the stance on the big tent approach by the Democrats? Big tent? Oh, uh, tent. Oh, big tent? Oh, like including lots of different types of people? <coughs> um, I'm assuming that's what they're referring to, right? Yeah, probably, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's probably good. The more people in your coalition, the better, right? 
Uh, Jedboy asks, follow up on the education question. Should university or college be paid for then? Also, should the government pay for re-education of people wanting to go back? Uh, uh, this is so complicated. I don't know. So, okay. So on one hand, I think that everybody that wants to go to a certain school should be able to go to a certain school. On another hand, I think we need to promote trade schools. Um, there's this really fucking weird misconception right now that exists on the internet that says a college degree is worthless. A lot of weird kids go on the internet and talk about like, oh, I got my degree and I can't get any blah, 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 blah. This is just not true though. Like the reality is, is that a four-year degree confers a massive wage premium in the United States. It's unbelievably huge. There is a huge difference between being a high school graduate and, and a college four-year degree graduate. It's like 20,000 a year. It's between like 38 and 56,000 a year or something in terms of earnings. It's a massive difference. Um, so like, should we be pushing every single person to get those four-year degrees or should we try to find ways to boost earnings of people that don't have the degrees um i, I, I don't know like that's all it's a really really hard question like if if we i think that promoting trade schools is really important i think that um increasing minimum wage to give like you know lower job earners like more earning power is probably important too um but but i think that education generally in the u.s should and it should the the initial access needs to be made easier. So whether it's access to loans or anything like that needs to be made easier. But like, does it have to be made free or whatever? I mean, I don't know. Like, a lot of people will, will go to school and complain that they came out with like sixty thousand dollars in debt or whatever. But it's like, if you got the degree, like, it was worth it. That was a good investment. Like, yeah, it's an investment. It's gonna cost some fucking money. But like, it it gives you a lot of fucking money for it. Like, you're way better off having a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt and having a four year degree than in not having a degree and just being a high school grad and, and working at whatever. Like. So, yeah, I, I don't know if we, like, need to – I think people obsess sometimes. They're like, oh, it's got to all be free, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's true. Um, but, like, the access needs to be there. If you're poor, we should we should never have a spot in the United States where you could have, like, a talented programmer or engineer who's like, ah, I can't go to school because I can't afford it. I've got to take care of my mom and dad or, I, you know, I just don't have the money to pay for it or whatever. Like, that should never happen. Um, okay. Uh, Being the Moment asks, what do you think it means to be a physicalist? Um, I, I don't know. My understanding of like a physicalist or a materialist is that you don't believe in the immaterial. You think that everything that exists is something that can be like measured or perceived by one of our senses. There is no like supernatural or immaterial or un... Yeah, that, that, that stuff doesn't exist or you wouldn't assume it exists or you don't know it exists. Uh, Iron asks, what do you think about transracialism? That's stupid. When it comes uh, to like transgenderism, before. there's like there's like a basis for it. Like we have like historical basis for like people feeling like they're trans, and, and like it seems to be there's some medical basis for it as well. Um, the the transracial stuff I've never ever heard of or seen any type of like oh yeah like back in Egypt there used to be people that you know thought they were another race and they experienced like racial dysphoria because like I don't I don't know maybe like white yeah, kids really I... wish they were black and wanted to say the n word on the internet or like the only racial dysphoria I can think of, but <laughs> otherwise yeah I don't know. Whenever I hear it come up on the internet, it's usually like during a debate about transgender Trans rights. Always. A it's a what about like fears and Yeah, yeah, what about, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Tess Please Ignore asks, what do you feel differs between a cult and a religion? Like, I mean, I, I don't know. There's probably the size. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, cults are usually defined as bad and religions are usually defined as good. Um, I like I, I guess like if if I was to try to like wade through this and provide a definition of my own, I mean like I think religions provide some value such that they give you like a community that is contributing to society in a positive way for you to contribute to. And cults tend to be more centered around like kind of like off stuff that doesn't really provide much value to the community. And then people tend to be swindled in like um, in cults and shit out of their money or out of their lives. And yeah, I don't know. But this is all kind of like begging the question. Like within the definitions themselves, it seems like cults are bad and religion is good to, to people. So I, I don't know. Um, do you think there should be a national mask mandate? And uh, what do you think the consequence for not complying should be if you do believe that? Mask mandate, good. Consequence is find the fuck out of people. Fuck you. Get a fine. Some bullshit. I have to waste all this fucking time being locked in my house and wearing masks and you dumb fucking pieces of shit. Or actually, you know what? If you're walking around without a mask, they should get federal agents to round you up and take you to a big house where you can all get infected with SARS-CoV-2. So that way, at the very least, if you want to walk around without a mask, it's fine because you can't <laughs> be infected again. That's That would be my official government policy on it. Forced infections for everybody that doesn't want to wear a mask. They don't think the infection is a big deal anyway, right? So they shouldn't even be opposed to it like yeah fuck them do the uh, do the federal abductions in cars that they're doing right yeah now sure the, take uh, the uh, agents <laughs> out of portland and go abduct the non-mask wearers yeah go for it yeah then everybody wins be like the opposite of trump policy sure um be in the moment asks if we had a perfect way of enforcing it would you make abortion illegal 
If not, why not? Do you think there's any moral load to abortion? I'm like a 49, 51 person when it comes to abortion. That's a really tough question. And I believe that to fairly ask questions about abortion, abortion, like exceeds beyond the boundaries of human knowledge or it dips into areas that we can't be knowledgeable of. So like right now, I think abortion is fine. Fuck it. That's where I'm at right now for it. Um, to really have a conversation about abortion, you're basically asking like, what is human life or what is a life? When is a life worth protecting? Is there a harm in killing an unconscious person? Like all of these things are going to be defined at like a meta level where there's not really a true like right or wrong. Like in my opinion, at least, I mean, other schools of philosophy will defer, will disagree with what I'm saying, of course. But like, I don't know if you can truly say like this is like an absolute right or an absolute wrong. And you need to be able to do that to have a concrete opinion on whether or not abortion is absolutely right or wrong. So since there's a disagreement there that I don't believe humans can resolve, then I say, fuck it, let people do what they want. Uh, Anton asks, isn't the estate tax basically grave robbing? Could that be considered lawful or good? I mean, what's the difference between robbing somebody and grave robbing someone? If we say that if we say that estate taxes are grave robbing, then wouldn't we say that normal taxes are just robbing robbing? Um, no, estate taxes are fine. Fuck them. Yeah. If, if it's a good way to raise money. Like a libertarian meme. Sure. Uh, what were you going to say? Sorry. Um, if, if the state taxes like get you money, then I, yeah, I think it's good. I mean, I don't know how much money they raise like all together. I don't know how much they account for, but yeah. Uh, Fletcher asks, do you think automation is the future? Uh, if it is, should we let people naturally fall out of blue collar or should the government intervene? I mean, I don't like preserving jobs. I think that's stupid. Let the economy modernize. Um, yeah, let the economy modernize. Fuck it. Um, if you get to a point where it's putting a lot of people out of work, then I mean, you just tax, just tax the uh, technology accordingly. I guess if um, if there's so much if there's so much efficiency to be gained by investing in automated capital, then they should be willing to pay some level of tax associated with that to have that advantage, and then that tax can work as a cash transfer to people that are disproportionately impacted by it. Is what I would say. Although it's some, yeah. A lot of we've had this question for a long time, um, for hundreds of years. The idea that capital is going to put laborers out of work, but it hasn't seemed to happen yet. So, yeah, we'll see if we get there ever. Uh, Scrungy asks, "Do you have a favorite debate of all time?" No, all of my debates suck because it's just me arguing with somebody that doesn't understand how to read a graph or like what basic stats are. Um, so I don't know. I have entertaining debates, I guess, but I, I don't know what I would say my favorite one is. I mean, m most people know me for the JonTron one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't I don't know if the John Tron one was my favorite though. Because sure. that was really just he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I really like the Lauren Southern one. That that one was like really important to me. Oh yeah, a lot of people seem to say that. It's very interesting how quickly people will back off economic claims when you actually push them on it and then just want to talk about <laughs> culture, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, B in the moment asks, in relation to the response you gave in the abortion question, couldn't you give that exact same response to all other moral questions? If not, then why not? Um, I think that as a society, we need to come together and agree on some arbitrary set of morals to ensure each other's like productivity and happiness. Um, and I think it's okay to eliminate people that can't share those values. Um, so, for instance, there's, prob there's no place in society for people that want to defend concepts like stealing or murdering or rape. Like, these people just have to be removed from society. We, c we can't make a society with those people. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, like, so we have to have some level of shared, quote-unquote, moral decency. Oh, to link into that, I wanted to uh, ask you about moral cognitivism. Uh, and if you are, are, you, like, are you aware of, like, uh, non-cognitivism? And, it, it, and even uh, beyond that, like... Uh, do you subscribe to like a particular like you know school in in moral cognitivism or non cognitivism or I, you just, every like... time I say I'm a particular thing, some like master's philosophy student shows up and tells me why I'm actually the other thing. So I <laughs> try not to have it. Like I used to think that I was like um, yeah. I used to think that I was a, a cognitivist. I think because I believed in error theory. Um, but then I think I switched over into non cognitivism because then I felt like moral statements were actually just like expressing like states of. Like like emotional states basically, but then somebody told me that that's actually still a form of cognitive. So I don't know. I don't fuck. It, I don't care. Well, like, no. I mean, like uh, they 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 just be wrong then because like uh, you know non cognitivism would just be like yeah like oh moral statements are n not propositions. Right? Yes. So, yeah. Like, if I say like true or false, that's like a proposition, and so moral statements aren't propositions. 
Yeah, I think that like what, like the way that I had thought about it before or expressed it before was I was like the, my concept of like like when I think that somebody says murder is wrong, what they're actually saying is like oh like I don't like murder or whatever basically. And then mm -hmm. I said that like I believe boo murder. Well, yeah, well, n kind of. I I would say the first thing, and then somebody, and then I would say yeah. So I'm like a non-cognitivist. So then somebody would say, well, no, if you say that you don't like murder, that's a proposition. Like murder boo is fundamentally different than saying I don't like murder. I, I don't know if that's true or not, mm -hmm. but that, that's how it was explained to me. So I, well, I don't know whatever the fuck that means. It is different yeah then yeah so then I, yeah i don't know I, I think that like when people talk about morals i think they're just expressing emotions i don't think you can make meaningful statements like murder is bad i don't think that means anything. i think good or bad means anything um like in terms of like um like yeah i, I, don't, I don't know fuck meta ethics okay that's my position on everything i don't believe in <laughs> yeah i agree i, I agree don't think there completely. is a way to define goodness um, at all and if there was I think that exists outside the bounds of human knowledge so uh, yeah so I so fuck all of meta ethnics so not meta ethnics I'm sorry fuck all of meta ethics so I don't know if that makes me an uncognitive or not but that's where I'm at okay uh meta ethics or poo poo that's it yes meta ethics boo okay there uh fogical lalices asks will you continue debating more the left or more the right in the coming months right i'm trying to get away from that socialist commie shit online they're a bunch of delusional fucking larping white college kid losers like i fucking hate all of it they don't know anything about they don't know anything about leftism or current like economic thought it's a huge waste of my fucking time and i've walked away with the worst opinion of everything involved with socialism as well it's given me a greater appreciation of capitalism even trying to dig into the stupid shit that a lot of these kids that are like on the quote-unquote left online say it's horrible fucking stupid shit and all of them, as soon as they start making money, turn into massive fucking hypocrites anyway. I feel like I'm more kind with, like, how I pay my workers than any other left-leaning dipshit on the internet who all hide their Patreons as soon as they get a certain amount of money, who all don't pay out people that actually work for them, who are, like, fucking insanely fucking rich and live these, like, fairly, like, wealthy lifestyles. Like, I don't know. Fuck it all. Fuck all that shit. Yeah. I remember when you calculated, uh, I think it was Sasan's. Uh, money on stream. Yeah, who like won't pay editors to work on his yeah. channel because he said he doesn't have the money for it. Like a lot of these, it's funny when I see like Hassan's done it. Um, I try not to focus on him as much because he's on Twitch, but like, um, <clears throat> or because I don't like fighting with him as much. But like, um, like Philosophy Tube. I remember when that d that dumb fuck. Okay, he's got like this guy's got like what? How many is it? Like five thousand, ten thousand patrons or whatever. And he's on Twitter saying like, oh, today I'm gonna take this note to my landlord and say that I'm not gonna be paying rent because of the current economic crisis. Like, motherfucker, you probably out earn your landlord like ten to one. Like top one percent income in the UK is like two. Hundred fifty thousand a year USD. Like it's not that much. Like there's no way that your landlord out earns you, and you're gonna sit here and, and like hold back payments on them, even though you work on YouTube. Your job is benefiting from the current like virus uh, atmosphere, and you're gonna pretend like you're hurt. I don't know. I hate that shit. I don't pretend to be poor. I don't pretend to be like everybody else. And it it bothers the fuck out of me when online socialists pretend to as well, or they're collecting five figures a month on their Patreons or their Twitch subs. I think it's stupid, but. Uh, Frosty asks, do you think people that defend John Tron or other white nationalist gamer types are aware of their beliefs being racist? I don't think they view themselves that way. I think a lot of it just comes down to levels of information. Like, I, I think that, like, I think that a lot of them support, I don't think, I don't, as much as it pains me to say, I don't think most people are, like, bad people, or people that support John Tron or even all, well, maybe all right, maybe, but, like, people that support these types of systems, I don't think they're intrinsically horrible, bad, racist, horrible people. I think that a lot of them are just kind of, like, misinformed, or they're not thinking about some things closely enough or carefully enough. Uh, the Incredible Aspie asks, do you feel that the black people's history in America has caused them to develop a culture that is risk averse and not as conductive to success? Yeah, probably. Almost certainly. Yeah, of course. Like, it's probably not a good idea to be, like, afraid of cops when you see them, right? That's pro that probably leads to a lot of dumb shit. But I mean, like, it's pretty understandable why it happens, right? Like culture, like your um, culture is going to be a product of the environment that you're like raised in. So, I mean, like everybody's culture comes from a certain area. Like it wouldn't be surprising that black people have a culture that can be like detrimental sometimes to their success if they're like in a country who, who you know, prior to the 1970s is like literally like, had laws against their success. So, yeah, I mean, that's not that surprising. Uh, Crack Jack Flood asks... And I'm guessing, like, it's very specific, I guess. He goes, 90% corporation tax rate, question mark. That's it. That's the whole thing. Um, I think corporation taxes are stupid. I think I think most economists think there should just be no tax on corporations. We should just raise the individual brackets. Um, I don't know what the... I haven't heard anybody give me a reasonable expectation or a reasonable explanation for why we should tax corporations. I don't... I just don't know. I don't understand why. Um, Staj Baj asks, what trait makes a group a terrorist group? I don't know, a group that terrorizes? <laughs> um, 
I don't know if a group exists to like stir up terror in the public, like to, to terrorize like the public for certain political ends. But I mean, I don't know, like the whole concept of what is a terrorist can be pretty arbitrary, right? Like, what is a terrorist and what is a freedom fighter? I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if like they probably could have just googled that for for the legal definition, I guess. But yeah, well, I'm guessing they're probably uh, the com guzzler. Asks, what's your opinion on transhumanism? And do you think it will bring an even greater class difference due to the richer being able to uh, get better parts? I think we're really far away from that, so I don't think about that at all right now. Um, we'll see in the future, but yeah, I don't, I don't think about this at all right now. I don't think we're anywhere near like CRISPR individually gene editing for stronger. Like we barely even understand like a lot of medical related stuff. Like the idea that we're going to be like building new body parts and shit anytime soon, I don't see that happening. But I mean, yeah, once it does happen, that would obviously be a concern that you have like a rich class of people that are like ultra powerful and shit because they have like, they're augmented and I don't know. Uh, Scrungy asks, would you ever consider doing that Twitch boycott thing you mentioned at some point where if a streamer gets banned uh, for a stupid reason, a group of people stop streaming until they get unbanned? Yeah, if I was part of a group like that, I'd 100% support that and be a part of it, but... Uh, Joel provides asks, do you read? And if so, what do you recommend? <laughs> Um, the last book I read was Lying About Hitler, which I thought was a really good book about um, John Evans, who was a guy that was an expert witness in the David Irving trials. Um, I thought that was really interesting about Holocaust denialism and how dishonest those people are. Um, and then right now I'm trying to work my way through fucking manufacturing consent, but yeah. Is it difficult or just annoying? Just like... boring. And there's like a lot of, I have to mark like a lot of background reading because I like to understand what I'm reading about, so. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce this. Uh, Tomaj asks, does Destiny have any plans on debating Twitch streamer Austin Shao show in the future? Like um, Austin Shao. Um, maybe. He's a guy that hosts a lot of podcasts on Twitch. He, um, he's been involved in some, like, pretty weird, like, racist stuff in the past. Like, he used to do a lot of, like, really racist caricatures on um, Twitch, um, especially of Indians. Um, and then he's had, like, some pretty questionable people on a lot of his shows. Like, I think some people have turned out to be, like, alt-writers or some, like, crazy shit. But I know that he's trying to, like, clean up his image a lot. Um, but he doesn't do debates too much, so maybe in the future we'll see. Um, Broadly Jim asks, is it too late to correct the misinformation spread by the QAnon community? I don't know, dude. If you believe in QAnon and shit, you're probably beyond redemption anyway. Uh, Stajbaj asks, do you think it's immoral to have kids? Like, what are your thoughts on anti-natalism? Uh, um, I, I don't... Uh, the way that this was described to me was that you can't consider the feelings of non-existent people because if you do, it just it breaks too much in philosophy. So I, I just don't think about it. If if you if you consider like the the wills and desires, or if you treat non-existent peoples as people that are already living, like you have to take into account like their um, like thoughts and feelings and shit. It seems like you're pretty fucked no matter what you do. So if you if you buy into that, that seems to be what you have to argue. Like antinatalism should just logically follow from considering um, unborn persons like feelings and shit. Um, if you're already considering it, then you already lose. So it seems like that's where the debate is. All right, I think I found a leftist question and. Um... I'm pretty sure it is because it says Marxism and it's bolded in all caps. Oh, uh, Krupnik asks, why are you calling communism utopian, Stephen? Marxism is the most popular type of communism, and it is strictly anti-utopian and is combating utopian versions of communism, such as, for example, communism based on religion. That's a cool story, bro. <laughs> Had to at least ask it. Now it's gone. Okay. Um, Fletcher asks, do you think... The warfare welfare state is inevitable. I have no idea what that is. Do I think the warfare welfare state? Yeah. Like, is. is he talking about like giving contracts to like Boeing and Lockheed, or is he talking about like the military industrial complex, or? I have no clue. Um, Naley official asks, "What's your opinion on Tim Pool?" Um, I think he's a just a worthless piece of shit and he's just stupid he's like um i don't know if like dave rubin had a kid with i'm trying to think of some other spineless female hack but i can't think of any that's on the level of dave rubin but like tim pool would be like dave rubin's like long lost child i think yeah just some coward that won't commit to any position and what about like both sides and has no intellectual integrity um yeah i hate that guy 
Oh, if D here we go. If Dave yeah. Rubin and Shoe on Head had a fucking kid, it would be fucking Tim Pool. Yeah, those two. <laughs> Um, the Incredible Aspie asks, do you fear that there will be a food shortage due to COVID-19? Well, it hasn't happened yet. Um, one positive thing about the United States, um, for all the lefties that were making fun of how fragile capitalism is, it seems like our supply chains and everything have actually ran like pretty unbelievably well throughout all of this. Um, I haven't heard of food shortages in any part of the United States yet, which I think is pretty insane. Um, not to say that they haven't happened. It's why I didn't hear about it or missed it, although I feel like I would have if they would have happened. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool. This seems like such a meme because I've never seen uh, like Jack Septicai do any debates. But Salem Two asks, "Have you considered debating Jack Septicai after the recent political claims he's made?" Um, I I'll debate almost anybody. So I mean, I probably would. I don't know what his recent claims are. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, only cliches asks, "If you could make someone the dictator of the United States, who would it be?" Elon Musk, because he's the smartest man that's ever lived. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. I don't. Who's like? Who would be the best fit person to lead? I've actually never thought about that question before. I probably should, but yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Paul Krugman, my good neoliberal economist brother. Fuck it. Uh, where am I? Asks. Uh, what are your thoughts about the tax uh, tax havens like Ireland and the Netherlands? Um, dumb. We should probably find ways to make that illegal. But it has to happen on an international level. It has to be, like, multiple countries working together to get rid of that dumb shit. Do you think they would work together when they get benefits from having tax havens in the first place? Or? Um, I think they could, but I don't think the political will is there because most people don't understand taxes in the first place. Most people don't even understand basic taxes. I agree with a lot of people that don't know anything about taxes. They want to argue about taxes. It's very strange. Um, yeah, most people just don't know anything about taxes, so it's it's like a really everything that has to do with taxes is usually like a really stupid <laughs> it's just really stupid yeah. uh phagical lalases asks do you think the united states is on the decline and will it continue being the number one power and do you think trump has done irreparable damage uh, to say whether or not an entire country is on a decline um imply some forward momentum that has existed um and then you'd have to ask like well with respect to what you know whether or not we're on a decline or an incline really depends what values you're measuring i guess um uh, if we're talking about in terms of like world leader status where other countries like look up to us and respect us and look to us for guidance and we definitely like are on a decline um i don't think it's like irreparable damage though hopefully um i guess we'll see with the next president um test please ignore asks is there a role for new technology developments that would damage privacy like should we let facial recognition technology that could invade privacy exist and if so should it be regulated and how would you go about it uh, i don't know it's a really hard one um on one end i, I don't think people care the thing is i don't think people care about privacy that much People like to say they care about privacy. It's like a virtue signal thing. But like if you offer somebody a huge feature in exchange for a little bit of privacy violation, most people will jump on it in a heartbeat. Nobody forced anybody to use Facebook. Nobody forced anybody to use, um, you know, Twitter. People did it because they liked the features, um, you know, and if people... Um, if people want those features and they have to give up some privacy for it, it seems like people make those decisions very quickly. So, you know, people talk about how evil facial recognition is, but, you know, I'm willing to bet that as soon as McDonald's offers you like a free double cheeseburger every time it recognizes you in one of their restaurants, you know, every five times or whatever, people are like, yeah, fuck it, this facial recognition is shit. I'm not going to opt out of it. It's free fucking cheeseburgers, dog. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, on one end, it's probably worrying how much data is collected about us and stored. Um, but on another end, I don't know if people are truly against it if companies are offering them something in exchange for it. And then on the other end, when people are so dead set against like paying for any online services or anything like they they're you know the, the people say oh they're anti-ad block and blah 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 but then they don't want to pay for any services or anything that's like okay well they got to raise money somehow it's going to be through advertising um which is going to involve some sort of tracking so yeah, i don't know uh scrunji asks what's the best way to contact you um probably um probably email it depends on what you're contacting me for <laughs> but i'd say email <laughs> sorry <laughs> Uh, Salem 2 asks, do you have any particular feelings on the Markiplier manslaughter scandal? Good one. No idea what he's talking about. Yeah, Markiplier is like a YouTube guy. There's no way that he fucking killed somebody, is there? Wait, oh god, if he did that, actually sent what I said was really bad. I don't think he's killed anybody, right? That's not like a news story that came out, is there? No. I okay, that know. guy's trolling. He's trolling. Alright. Cringe asks, would you consider running for Congress? Um, no, fuck that. It doesn't pay enough. Too much stress. I wouldn't be able to stream as much. Yeah, fuck that. 
Uh, Cal asks, who are your favorite political content creators? No, no, I don't like... Um, oh, wait. Um, I like David Pakman on YouTube, and I think I like Sam Cedar. Um, and then there are a bunch of smaller guys at Twitch, but for large guys, those two guys would be the only two that I like. Most content creators that do politics online are dumb as rocks. If you read more articles, you'll be more informed than 95% of them. Most of them are just incredibly fucking stupid and uninformed. Uh, Color Thief asks... Do you think the COVID-19 crisis may worsen existing inequalities? And if yes, what policies would you propose to reverse these gaps? Yeah, I mean, it seems to be the case that African-American communities are both more susceptible um, and hit harder. Uh, or three things. They're more susceptible, they tend to get hit harder, and then it seems like they lack access to hospitals at greater rates than like white communities. So um, it seems like some level of funding probably needs to go towards that. But my guess is going to be that it's not like COVID-19 is causing these problems, more that it's exacerbating already existing problems of, of lack of funding of infrastructure, healthcare-wise, and like African-American communities. So in terms of what we should do about it, I mean, the same shit we always should do is try to like make that up with, you know, alternative funding mechanisms. Uh, Dominic Sile asks, what are your thoughts on the political bend of the recent Breaking Bad remake? No clue. Is that the uh, Saul? Everybody calls it. Wait, what the fuck is the name of it? No clue. The Saul show? Fuck, what's it called? I want to say everybody calls Saul. Is that it? Better call Saul. Better, oh, better, better call, call Saul. Oh, yeah, better call Saul. Not everybody calls Saul. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is that political? Is there another Breaking Bad remake? I don't know. Uh, Fletcher asks, so Kanye registered to run. Should we have a vetting system to ensure people aren't going through a mental crisis? I'm guessing you have seen his tweets, likely going through a manic phase. Yeah. Would a system against that end up discriminating against people with any mental disorder overall? And would that be a bad thing? Oh, it's probably pretty important to our political system that anybody can run. Um, just leave it at that, unfortunately. Kanye West is clearly crazy, but he's a um, celebrity. So when he's doing his like manic phases, he's got a lot of people around him to support him through those manic phases, which is pretty unfortunate. So, yeah. yeah even then, would he be more uh, more intelligent than Trump? <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know. Kanye West is pretty fucking crazy. Uh, Fletcher asks, should we do things about factory farms? I don't care about vegan shit, so I don't care. Uh, I have to ask, do you treat it like how uh, like Thomas Jefferson was a product of his society? Like, that kind of thing? No, I just don't give like, a do fuck you... about animals. Okay. Uh, Naley Official asks, follow up on Tim Pool. What do you think of him talking about civil war and people who think the U.S. is going into a new civil war? People like Tim Pool have always existed, and people like Tim Pool have always said that we're always going towards a civil war, so I don't know. Fuck him. Uh, Der Reich Skansler asks, any opinion on the European Union? Um, seems like a good idea, um, but it seems like we're having some problems right now, so I don't know. What with the UK leaving and all, but... Yeah, I wonder how much that's going to weaken that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the Cum Guzzler asks, do you think that the more wealthy should be taxed less due to it bringing in more wealthy people who could be taxed more? No. What? Like, there are wealthy people uh, that are going to live in the United... No, we need to tax people appropriately to fund our social programs. I think that's okay. Um, well, Crackjack seems to really love talking about taxation. Uh, extension to the negative income tax. Uh -huh. It says, welfare tends to pe keep people stuck in a social class, especially in the UK. If you show any ability to work or walk, the rug is ripped out from under you, and you're expected to pick yourself up and get on with it. So the barriers there keep people trapped in welfare negative income tax would in theory be a way of just giving people access to money with no barrier i i unfortunately i want to say that guy's wrong without knowing anything um because i feel like he is but maybe not i know that in the united states i think it's pretty rare that our benefits just get ripped away right at a certain income level generally they scale and then they taper off is usually what happens like i know with the earned income credit that happens in the u.s i would be incredibly surprised in the uk if the benefits were just ripped off instantly at a certain level if they were then that's not a problem with welfare that's a problem with an incredibly outdated way of administering care or, or welfare um if the uk does that then i'm sorry the uk's like way of doing it is really fucking stupid but i know in the u.s that's not how it does um so like having scaling benefits with your income is like really good Oh, so somebody in chat just said he's wrong. Universal credit scales. Um, so, I, but, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure in the UK. They do. I can't say or not. I can just say what people in my chat are saying. But yeah, um, I mean, the the whatever income you get based on your welfare should scale according to your income. It shouldn't all be ripped away at a certain income level. Like uh, that would be pretty shitty. 
Uh, Lunch Time asks, what are your thoughts on Steve Manchin's unemployment plan? No, I don't even know what it is. Me neither. Uh, Test Please Ignore asks, as data science continues to become better and better at predicting people, uh, take the teenager that Walmart knew to be pregnant before her dad, do you think regulations should be implemented, and in what way? Um... I don't know. There should I, I actually think as much as it was annoying and people memed about it, I think the GDPR was a good first step. Like um, companies need to inform you what information they have about you. They should delete information that they haven't used in a year or whatever. Like I think that kind of stuff is good. Um, B in the moment asks this. Uh, this seems like a, uh, a what do you call it? He goes, how often do you think you're intellectually dishonest in debates? Well, I mean... I'm going to answer the same way literally every single person probably answers and I would say I don't think I'm ever intellectually dishonest, right? But nobody, I don't know if anybody thinks they're intellectually dishonest. Yeah, I mean, my bad faith actors might, but I don't think. Yeah, I guess maybe that's yeah, possible, but... yeah. But I think most people think they're being pretty earnest or genuine. Yeah. Uh, Scrungy asks, what do you think about EA? Mm, I mean, no opinion. I don't know. It's a big gaming company. It's, yeah. Uh, Fletcher people asks, like to have your political. Oh, sorry, I'm just elaborating. People like to complain about big gaming companies, but then they all buy the fucking games. So I don't like most people complain about this shit, and then they go and they buy the game. So fuck them, you know. Everybody complains yeah. that the last Assassin's Creed was the same as the first one. I don't know. I've never played an Assassin's Creed game before because they look boring as fuck to me. But when everybody complains about them and then they go out and buy them, like, well, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't care what your complaints are. If you're gonna go and buy the game anyway, like, fuck you. Yeah, it seems just like the privacy thing where people complain about privacy and then they sell themselves out to Google and stuff, anyway. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, people um, say people. Yeah, that's another feature thing. I, you know, I say a lot of these things like I'm condemning the average person, but I do, I do a lot of these things as well. Fucking, I yeah. love that when I log into my goddamn, if I find a good ass fucking porn video, I can log into that shit on my computer and fucking bookmark it. It's on my phone. It's on my fucking laptop. I can sign into another computer and that shit is synchronized across all my fucking devices. Like, I don't know. That could level of convenience is really fun for me. I enjoy that. But obviously, it comes at a cost too because now Google has all my information. So, yeah, fuck it. It is what it is. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, me personally, too, um, with privacy. Like, I use Google sometimes. I think mm -hmm. that it's just become the norm. Uh, Salem2 asks, do you think they'll remake Diamond and Pearl? And what are your feelings on the possible remake? I don't. I haven't played any. I'm assuming this is about Pokemon, right? I haven't played any Pokemon yeah. games since Crystal, so I have no idea. Which I think was on the Game Boy Color. Um, Fletcher asks, do you think current environmental re regulations are good or bad? That's such a vague question. I mean, yeah. it's good to regulate environmental stuff. Um, I think we got rid of, like, carbon taxes completely in the U.S., right? Which seemed to have, like, an overwhelming amount of positive evidence related to them. So that seems to be pretty sad that we got rid of those, but... Um, Frosty asks, is your stance still that anyone can become top 1% at anything, or do you think there's exceptions there? I think if anybody's willing to practice, I think that anybody can become exceedingly good at something. Like, yeah, I still believe that to be true. I mean, with some obvious exception, right? Like, if you're, like, four foot two, you're probably never going to be a good basketball player or whatever. Like, sorry. But... Um, Gage asks... Um, oh, this is, like, a... Are you, are you for gun control? And if so, why? Um, I mean, I'm for some level of gun control. Like, I think that we should probably do more, like, psych testing for people to get firearms. Like, it's pretty crazy how easy it is to get them. Um, but, like, all the restrictions around rifles are really dumb. Most restrictions, I don't know. Honest to God, I think the biggest improvement that we'd see from, like, gun-related shit in the United States is we need to get rid of the fucking war on drugs. That shit is stupid as fuck and plays into so much dumb shit. That needs to go so fast. And then maybe we can talk about gun shit afterwards. Um, Tom asks, currently elective neonatal male genital mutilation, aka circumcision, is legal around the world, and FGM was just recently outlawed in the Sudan. Um, what European country or court case do you think could guarantee boys' 14th Amendment equal protection? Holy so Christ. Like, Talking about a fucking yeah. bias as fuck framing for the question. I mean, I'm opposed yeah. to circumcision, though. I don't think it should be allowed anywhere. I think that's a really fucked up thing. Except for, like, in medical cases, yeah. Um... So, Illich asks, thoughts on national Bolshevism? Uh, I don't have any strong thought. I don't believe in it. I mean... <laughs> but... 
Um, Fletcher asks, have your political views changed drastically over the years? Um, probably, yeah. When I was growing up, I was like hardcore conservative Republican. In my early, early 20s, I was like, um, I was like kind of like libertarian-esque. And then now I'm like a huge like social democrat. Yeah. So I've definitely trended left over time. So I don't, I don't know what Crackjack is trying to get out of this, but what is your opinion on the unmarked militarized federal police being used to detain people without warning or any provocation? In Portland? I mean, if it's actually being done for no provocation or for no reason, that's probably a bad thing. Um, it seems like that would be a bad thing. Um, I'm not like ideologically opposed to federal agents going into cities and helping out with shit, although I don't know if they should do that without the consent of the mayors. That's really weird. So I don't know where it stands right now in the U.S. I'm probably not okay with what's going on right now. But yeah, I'm not sure you would be against due process. So this... Yeah, yeah. Um, be in the moment asks if you don't believe in meta ethics, then do you also think that you can't make an argument for why rape is bad in any terms than your own preferences? Correct. Uh, the Come Guzzler asks, do you think one strong leader or a group of leaders with the same ideas and goals can be better for a country than a group of people with differing ideals and goals of how a country should be run? Mm. I mean, yeah, of course, right? If you have, like, the ideal perfect god dictator that knows the best shit about everything, then that would probably be better. But realistically, that can never happen, so doing things democratically is probably better. Yeah, it seems like a single-party state kind of question. Mm -hmm. Um... That question's already been answered. Uh, Emblem asks, do you think that capitalism will be an ideal economic structure 50 to 100 years down the line when the majority of jobs we have today can be uh, automized? I don't know automated. if the majority of jobs automated. we have today will be automated, um, and I don't know what anything will look like 50 years from now. 50 years ago, we didn't have the internet. Like, I, I have no idea what things will look like. Yeah, maybe we'll have full-on VR then. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, Gage asks, what do you think of Trump pulling the United States out of the World Health Organization? That's stupid as fuck. Um, the rest of these questions have been, I would say they've been answered er earlier, except for maybe uh, Esso asks, what do you, what would you say is your ethical system? Um, uh, 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 I... There is like, um, from a meta level, we can do the meme like descriptive egoism, and then on a normative level, I'm like um, some form of consequentialist. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Um, given that the rest of these questions have been answered and the staff closed the questions here, I would say that we're done here. Um, I'm sorry about earlier that I I should have like introduced myself. I forgot about that and just got onto the thing. Wait, for what? Like, I haven't done this before, so. Um, when we began, I wasn't like, oh, hi, Destiny. Uh, my name is Max. Nice to meet you. That kind of thing. Oh. I just kind of rolled with it, so That's sorry okay. about that. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for agreeing to this. Um, we usually ask the um, people that we have on here if they would be interested in, like, coming back if we had, like, a group of people, like a, like a, like a round table kind of discussion, that kind of thing. We had a uh, crowd on before and JJM, and we asked them the same thing. Like, um, um, if you could, would you be interested in coming yeah. back? Yeah, they could be interesting, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thanks. For see you me. later. Yeah. Um, I will see you later. Wait, hold on. Sorry, one guy had a question. I'll answer this last one. Whatever. Interesting. All right. Um, what do you think about Jordan Peterson's stance that there isn't a job for people below 85 IQ that wouldn't be counterproductive? Is 10% of the population really below 85 IQ? That probably includes like every like severely mentally disabled person as well, right? I, I would imagine. Um, but I mean, like that state. I don't. I don't know if that statement is entirely true. Is it really impossible that like an 85 IQ person couldn't do like? I don't want to say like janitorial work, like all janitors are 85 IQ, but like some, there must be some like incredibly simple job or something, right? I would imagine, but I, I, that would be my guess. But yeah. Okay. Um, okay. All right. I love you. Be careful. Um, and maybe I'll be back for that round table thing if you ever want to. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, wait, are you, you're not the Have same guy luck. that I talked to to set this up, right? 
Uh, what? Oh, no, no, I'm not. That was Johnny. That was Johnny. Oh, Lewis. yeah, Johnny. I'm, okay, I'm, sorry. I have, like, a big policy now. I'm sorry. I love you all so much. Um, I don't link to any other discords in mine for two reasons. One is because in all of these political servers on fucking Discord, 95% of them are infested with crazy fucking commies or fucking alt-writer, pedophile, crazy fucking shit. So I just don't link to anything. Um, and then, two, if I link to anybody, I get a whole bunch of people that will start asking, like, oh, can you link to the server, blah, 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 blah. And it just becomes impossible to manage. And then I feel bad saying yes to everybody. So that's why, like, I kind of have like a policy of, like I just don't link to anything or whatever but yeah it's not like a personal yeah, yeah, like gotcha. I hate you guys anything, yeah. uh, I mean I mean I guess you're doing a good thing because we do have a uh, crazy commies here <laughs> sure yeah, yeah no not to say that commies are the same as pedophiles or whatever um at least half of them aren't so okay I love you guys I'll see you later right see you, uh, see you later. later all right bye it's called the U.S. flag you stupid fuck this is the only flag that the United States federally has and recognizes why the fuck are you acting like the a different